When Boeing launched the highly popular 787, they had a monopoly in that market segment. However, in the years that followed, Airbus launched the A330neo program. So how does it compare to the 787? And did Airbus well re-engineering the A330? That's OK Aviation. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe and leave a like. This really helps the channel grow and makes it easier for others to find. Launched on July 14, 2014, the Airbus A330neo features new engines and winglets. For the rest, the plane very much looks like its predecessor, the A330. At first, Airbus wasn't planning on building the A330neo, but it was looking to use the A330's airframe as the basis for the new A350. However, it turned out after talks with potential customers that this wouldn't be efficient enough compared to the Dreamliner. And instead, Airbus would develop a whole new airframe based on composite materials that would become the A350. The A350, however, was no longer a competitor to the 787, but because of its large size, became a competitor to the 777. This meant that Airbus didn't have a plane in their lineup that could compete with the Dreamliner, which was becoming a bigger success by the day. This changed when Airbus in the end decided to re-engine the A330 and update the winglets, creating the A330neo, a relatively cheap and easy solution to the problem. The big question is, of course, has it met our expectations or did it turn out to be a financial disaster? Let's take a look at the costs and benefits of the program. The development costs of the program turned out to be relatively low, at 2 billion US dollars. And while this certainly is a lot of money, it's nothing compared to the 15 billion for the A350 program and the 32 billion Boeing spent on the development of the 787. Also, because Airbus was still producing the older generation A330 and most of the parts stayed the same, they could almost seemingly transition into fabricating the A330neo, again saving money. Because of these lower costs, Airbus is able to offer steeper discounts on their list price, making it way cheaper than the 787. And this turns out to be one of the key selling points as the plane is less efficient than the Boeing competitor, but since it has lower upfront costs, it's easier for airlines to acquire and justify the higher operating expenses. Staying on the topic of efficiency, the A330neo may not have a competitive advantage over the 787, but it has one over many other older widebody aircraft. At the time when the program was launched, Boeing had a gigantic backlog filled with orders for the 787, and if an airline wanted to buy some of those efficient Dreamliners, they would have to wait over 5 years before they could get one. Airbus, however, didn't have a full order book for the A330neo, and thus was able to deliver the aircraft way sooner than Boeing. This meant that for airlines in need for a quick replacement or looking to expand, the A330neo was a good looking option that was available on relatively short notice. While these advantages were mostly on the side of the airlines, Airbus also gained something here. Because many airlines are looking to cut costs, they will operate in as homogeneous fleet as possible. If Airbus didn't offer the A330neo, some airlines might be tempted to shop at Boeing and after they have trained to cruise for the Dreamliner, they might choose the 777 over the A350 because crews flying the 787 are also type rated for the 777. By offering the A330, Airbus can assure that airlines do not have to go to Boeing, but can stay at Airbus. Lastly, while Airbus might not benefit directly by offering a competitor to the 787, they force Boeing to offer steeper discounts on the Dreamliner in order to compete with the cheap A330neo, reducing the revenue per aircraft for Boeing. And as I said, while this might not benefit Airbus directly, in the long run, this could mean that Boeing has less money to spare to invest into further research and development. This all sounds great of course, but how did the A330neo perform and was it up to expectation? Airbus mentioned that they expected to sell a total of 1000 units and at the time of making this video, they have orders for 338 of which 65 are operational and with the current market conditions, it seems very unlikely that they will ever reach that goal. One note to make is that in the end, while the A330neo isn't the A350, it did cannibalize a bit on its bigger sister aircraft. The A350-800, the shorter version of the A350, turned out to be less efficient and after the launch of the A330neo, airlines switched their orders to either the larger A350-900 or the A330neo. The first A330neo was delivered just over 3 years ago, on November 26, 2018, to TAP, the Portuguese flag carrier. While the A330 is quite new, it hasn't been a big success and performs steadily at best. This brings up the most important question. Does the A330neo have a future? There are some dark clouds forming over the program. 
Of the over 250 aircraft on order, some of those orders are severely at risk. Air Asia X, the largest customer with 78 on order, is facing some serious financial problems and they have announced that they won't take the A330 Neo into service anytime soon. Another large customer, Iran Air, with 28 on order, faces other issues. Due to a number of trade restrictions to Iran, Airbus might not be allowed to sell the aircraft to Iron Air. And then there is the competition from within. Airbus's move to expand the range of the A321 even further with the XLR and the highly competitive A350, the market for the A330neo is getting smaller over time. However, as I mentioned before, there might also be other motives for Airbus to keep the program afloat for the near future. Due to its relatively low costs, it will be cheap to keep the A330neo around. And if they decide to cancel the NEO, Boeing will get a monopoly again in that segment, which isn't desirable either. What are your thoughts on the A330 NEO? Will Airbus keep it around for the foreseeable future? Or do you think they will cancel the program anytime soon? Which airlines do you think should buy the type and why? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for a future video, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing to Let's Talk Aviation.